our partners in the European Union are genuinely sad uh, that we are planning to leave this organisation. Summits come and go in Brussels, but this was something special. David Cameron bade farewell to the EU and paved the way for a bewildered Britain to leave the bloc. Brexit is becoming real. Here are four takeaways from the two-day gathering. We may be years away from the formal divorce, but the trial separation has begun. The 27 EU leaders met without Britain this morning for the first time, plotting a common strategy on Brexit. This was a watershed moment where the two sides prepared to part ways after 43 years of sovereign partnership. Dritt ist es für mich wichtig, dass wir natürlich Großbritannien weiter als Freund und Partner betrachten, obwohl wir eine Entscheidung sehen, die wir alle sehr bedauern sind wir in vielerlei Weise verbunden und bleiben das auch. Und als deutsche Bundeskanzlerin sage ich dies auch für die bilateralen Beziehungen. Britain is becoming a useful foe. Anti-EU populists in France, Netherlands and elsewhere rejoiced at Britain's Brexit vote. Everyone sees pressure for more referendums rising across the bloc. But this summit highlighted a different point. Some pro-EU leaders are seeing the upside of Brexit in fighting populists at home. Market turmoil, political chaos, Britain's woes are making clear what the costs of leaving the EU actually are. Europe is ready to start the divorce process even today. For once, the EU side has its act together, at least when compared to Britain. While Westminster is in the throes of a mini-revolution, this summit laid down a common negotiating position for the 27. They will not talk in any way, formal or informal, to Britain's next Prime Minister until they activate the formal divorce process. That's a clause in the EU treaties that gives the upper hand to the EU. There will be no negotiations of any kind until the UK formally notifies its intention to withdraw. If he wants to stay in the market, as I said, he will have to pay the price in all the sense of the term, including with the freedom of circulation. We cannot transition on that. On transiger là -dessus. Les quatre libertés. On ne peut pas avoir la liberté des capitaux, la liberté des marchandises, la liberté des services, et puis dire pour les personnes, restez chez vous. Eh ben non, ça ne marche pas comme ça. Their position is firm at the moment, and there's unity. But we'll have to see how they behave when Britain actually finds a leader. On fait preuve de patience et de compréhension. Dorénavant, l'entre-deux. L'ambiguïté ne sont plus possibles parce que nous avons besoin de stabilité et pas seulement pour les marchés financiers. Et ce n'est pas le parti conservateur britannique qui doit imposer son agenda. The EU is moving on. François Hollande of France called time on the City of London's place as the wholesale financial centre for the Eurozone. To him, it's not a matter of punishment, it's just the consequences of leaving the club. On voit bien qu'il n'y a aucune raison pour l'Europe et encore moins pour la zone euro de permettre à un pays qui n'est plus membre de l'Union et qui n'a jamais été membre de la zone euro de continuer à faire des opérations en euro. There isn't much sign either that EU leaders will be willing to compromise on principles like free movement of labour to let Brexit Britain enjoy full single market access. So we've reached the start of a long political journey. Nobody is quite sure what the destination is, but Britain and the EU have finally started to part ways. This is Alex Barker for the Financial Times in Brussels.